What about Patch the Pirate? This has been a little request. Some uh, brother asked me if I could do a video of what I thought about this whole thing of the Patch the Pirate Club. You might not have even heard of this, but there are many um, Babel buildings that are doing this thing for the children, uh, children's youth ministry, uh, based on this program called Patch the Pirate. And uh, we're going to talk about this uh, in this video here, what I think about it, what the Bible has to say about this thing. And um, But, I mean, you can get online, you can look it up, and you'll see that it's a lot of Baptists are doing this whole Patch the Pirate thing. And uh, if you're not familiar with this, I prepared a little video here showing the man who is actually, quote-unquote, Patch the Pirate there. They call him that. Ron Hamilton is his real name. We'll be talking more about him in this video. But I'm going to show you here uh, him doing his performance thing there in a Babel building with children and things. So let's play this video here so you can see what pirate youth groups are all about. Some folks take a risky chance, practicing a deadly dance, stepping to the edge of sin. Whoops, they fall right in. Good You say, now, come on, Brian, that was not very nice putting the uh, Hollywood movie clips in with uh, the pirate thing there and an, an alcohol commercial. Um, yeah, but you see, that's what most people think of when they think of pirates. And uh, the verse that I put in there, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, if you have a King James Bible, you can look this up, 1 Thessalonians 5, 22. It says here, Abstain from all appearance of evil. Verse 21 says, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Are pirates good? No. Uh, when the average person thinks of a pirate, they think of somebody who is a thief, somebody that steals, somebody that drinks, somebody that's a womanizer, very, very violent. How can you Christianize that? It doesn't work. And you say, well... I don't know, though, Brian. I, I just, you know, maybe we should try to get, you know, a definition for pirate from somebody who would have actually been around back then in the early 1800s. Huh. You know, uh, somebody from the early 1800s that would have been around back when there were actually real pirates in the sea. You know, where could we go to find somebody from the early 1800s that would define what pirate means. Oh, maybe Webster's 1828 Dictionary. <laughs> so let's look this up here. See what he, how he defines the word pirate. Because after all, I mean, he was around back when they were. I mean, maybe they had a, a youth group, you know, at, at the Babel buildings back in 1828. Maybe that was a big thing back then, that they were all acting like pirates or something, you know. Sure. Okay, let's see. Pirate. Let's go up here. Pirate. Uh, formerly, this word signified a ship or sea soldier answering to the marine of the present day. Number one, 
First definition, a robber on the high seas, one that by open violence takes the property of another on the high seas. In strictness, the word pirate is one who makes it his business to cruise for robbery or plunder, a freebooter on the seas. That sounds Christian. Definition number two, an armed ship or vessel which sails without a legal commission for the purpose of plundering other vessels indiscriminately on the high seas. Definition number three, a bookseller that seizes the copies or writings of other men without permission. That's why today, even this one is still true. You have piracy laws. People coming and taking things online, stealing music, stealing videos, stealing whatever else. That's called piracy. Okay, let's see if there's another definition here. Definition number four. Christian youth organization uh, founded by Ron Hamilton. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not in there. I'm just being a little sarcastic there. How can you Christianize something like that? And right there, Webster's 1828 Dictionary, written at the time of real pirates, where there were real pirates out there in the seas, and he says not one of those definitions is good. Not one of them. It's all centered around people that steal for a living. Why would you choose that as a way to teach children the, the Word of God and teach them how to be good Christians? You know? It's a problem. You say, well, you know, yeah, okay, but maybe, you know, you could have like, he was a pirate and then he got saved and so he's a saved pirate. That doesn't work either. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Show you why that doesn't work either. Ephesians 4, verse 28 says, Let him that stole, you know, like a pirate, steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Huh. Um, if he was a pirate and he got saved, he would no longer be a pirate. Just as a thief who gets saved is no longer a thief. See? You have to become a new creature in Christ Jesus. It's a problem. You say, but what about the, the real pirates back then? Were there some really good pirates back in the day? We're going to look here online. Just going to talk about a few of the real pirates. Um, we have here historylists.org. First, you have William Kidd, Scottish from 1645 to 1701. And it says a bunch of things there. I'm going to give you the link to this article so you can go check it out for yourself. Um, but um, he was basically, you know, stealing things. And, and then he ended up, you know, they hung him, you know, because he was a pirate. And they, after his hanging, his body was doused in, doused in tar and hung by chains along the Thames River. Nice. How about Edward Teach Blackbeard? You hear of the pirate named Blackbeard. We'll read this one here. It says, Though there have been more successful pirates, Blackbeard is one of the best known and widely feared of his time. He commanded four ships and had a pirate army of 300 at the height of his career and defeated the famous warship HMS Scarborough in sea battle. He was known for barreling into battle, clutching two swords with several knives and pistols at the ready. He captured over 40 merchant ships in the uh, Caribbean and without flinching killed many prisoners. Excuse me. Though he had many unofficial wives, he was officially, quote unquote, officially married to a 16 year old girl whom legend, legend has it he offered as a gift to his crew after she tried to reform him. I can certainly see why a Christian would want to emulate a, a fine moral character like this. After a fierce battle in which he made a stand with candle smoke rising from his beard, he was overtaken by the Royal Navy and beheaded. His head was, take, his head was then raised and upon a stake as a warning to other pirates near Virginia's Hampton River. Nice, nice, yeah. Then it goes into Bartholomew Roberts Black Bart and um, Henry Every Long Ben they called him. Uh, he was actually very wealthy and was one of the few that actually was not killed. How about Anne Bonny? It says here, having traveled to the New World with her family, Anne fell in love and married a poor sailor named James Bonny. 
but when she grew increasingly disappointed by her husband's lack of valor, she began seeking out the company of many different men in Nassau. Amongst these men were Calico Jack Rackham, captain of a pirate ship. She joined, she joined his crew whilst acting and dressing like a man. There you go. Isn't that nice? Including drinking and fighting profusely. Thus she fought under his command and along with fellow female pirate Mary Reed, she coaxed the crew onto even greater bloodshed and violence and became a formidable, formidable pirate herself. However, she was captured with Rackham's crew and sentenced to death. Both she and Mary Reed claimed pregnancy in prison and their death sentences weren't carried out, but Mary had the misfortune of dying in prison. No one is sure how the famous female pirate died, uh, though there is specula speculation that she returned home to her husband or her father. Fine, fine example of an upstanding citizen there to let's model a Christian youth you know, movement after that. And it goes down through here. We're not going to read all of these, but a lot of these are 1600s into the 1700s. And, um, you know, some of them went back, you know, into the 1800s, actually. So, you know, and of course, here's one, uh, Sir Francis Drake. And people say, you know, well, see, he was a good pirate. No, he was actually a privateer, which is different. Okay, a different thing there. So, you know, he was working for the governments back then. And, um, you know, so you can't say, well, uh, Francis Drake there, he was a good man, and therefore pirates can be good. Uh, that's nonsense. Pirate, by the dictionary definition, is a thief, a robber. And it's interesting because, in many ways, Patch the Pirate is actually a thief. Let's go to their website here, patchthepirate.org. Board the Jolly Roger. Interesting. Yeah, let me just uh, check something here quick. All right, just wanted to see about this thing. I, it just came into my mind here, and I thought I need to make sure of that. Uh, you can actually just go to Google Images. You know, go to google.com and then click on images. Type in Jolly Roger. And see what it comes up with. It's the pirate flag, the skull and crossbones. And this is on Patch the Pirates website. Abstain from all appearance of evil, skull and crossbones? Huh. That's rather interesting. And it goes into the About Us here, and you can look at that whole thing, and it has all the different radio programs, you know, because it goes even further than, than uh, you know, this thing of the Patch the Pirate. There's a whole bunch of other ones there, too. You know, Patch the Pirate Adventures in uh, the Old West and in Outer Space and whatever else. And here you have International Spy Academy. And uh, we were doing a little bit of research, and my wife actually found where there's a Lutheran you know, Roman Catholic, basically. It's a, you know, the Lutherans are Catholic now. So, really always were. But, you know, and they're doing this Patch the Pirate thing. Okay. But, you know, all these different things here in this big commercial business. Uh, oh, I mean ministry. And, uh, you know, it, it, just ridiculous. And then you go into Patch's story here on this website. And, you know... Uh, you know, it starts out here, it says, Every young boy dreams of becoming a cowboy, a fireman, or maybe even a pirate. And I did too. I also dreamed of having a nickname that sounded dangerous and exciting. As a Christian? We're supposed to have a nickname that's dangerous? Okay. And it goes down through there and he talks about how that he had cancer and how that it, uh, he lost his left eye. You know, and as a result, then people started acting, you know, they started saying that he was a pirate, so he just went with it, you know. And we'll see this interview here, Baptist Voice, you know, we'll check out, out this thing here, Baptist Voice. Um, he says here, uh, or the article says, his voice is familiar, his speech is humble, Ron Hamilton is not just an entertainer for children, He's a messenger of the faith. Sure. For nearly three decades, his music has been an inspiration for parents and children around the world. Today, the adventures of Patch the Pirate radio broadcast 
is recognized by the National Religious Broadcasters as being the third largest children's religious programming outreach. Uh -huh. It began with 45 stations and now enjoys more than 450 outlets. When confronted with his ministry's success, Dr. Hamilton quickly gives the glory to God. For what? Making yourself into a pirate? Using sin to reach the children? The story of Patch the Pirate began with a routine visit to the eye doctor that turned into an alarming discovery, cancer in his left eye. After weeks of testing, Ron Hamilton was rolled into the operating room for surgery. Only God knew, the out knew what the outcome would be. After slowly regaining consciousness, his wife, Shelley, quietly relayed the news, The doctors found cancer. Your left eye is gone. When I returned to church, Ron says, Kids were fascinated by my eye patch. Everywhere I went, children would call out to their embarrassed mothers, Look, Mom, there goes a pirate. The children in my church gave me a nickname that stuck, Patch the Pirate. Since 1980, Ron and his wife, Shelley, and their five children have produced and starred in an annual series of audio recordings for children. Okay, and then he goes into saying how that they interviewed him. Now, let's just think about this for a minute. People look at him as a result of having a patch over his left eye, and they say, hey, look, a pirate, a pirate. There's a pirate right there. Do you then say, okay, because people call me a name like a pirate, then I should use that? You know, that'd be kind of like a, a, an attractive Christian young woman walking along and a bunch of guys whistle at her and say, wow, baby, you got a nice body. And she goes, why? Well, I have a nice body. I guess I should come out with a Christian youth movement and call myself Patty the Prostitute. You say, oh, come on, Ryan, prostitute? Is a pirate better than a prostitute? You know, I mean, should we have uh, Billy the bank robber, you know, or Alex the axe murderer? I mean, you know, doesn't make any sense. And see, it goes back to this whole thing. And you can watch my study on the thing of youth ministry and stuff like this. It goes back to this whole thing of getting the children in and making it this fun, exciting, neat, little fun thing and so we can get the parents. This whole movement, you will not find this youth movement in the pages of the King James Bible. It's just not there. You won't find it. But let's continue. Back to this article here. Uh, talks about, you know, how people have been changed in their lives, been saved and whatever else. Uh -huh. But we'll go down here. It says, has anyone criticized you for choosing a pirate as your musical character? That's the question they ask him. He says, yes. But the criticism usually comes from those that don't know the background. When I came out of the hospital, I was a pirate whether I wanted to be or not. Huh? What? You're, you're a pirate whether you wanted to be. Having an eye patch does not make you a pirate. Continuing, he says here, When I walk into McDonald's, even today, the kids say, Look, Mom, there's a pirate. I had to make up my mind to either fight this image my whole life or go with it. Uh, I think you should have fought it. Someone that doesn't know the full story may ask, If you choose a role model for kids, why choose a pirate? I didn't choose the image. It is just what kids uh, see me as now. Oh, he didn't choose the image. Uh, yes, I think he did, and I think he made it into a very profitable business. And you see, this isn't just some kind of a thing that's existed for two or three years. or so. Three decades. Three decades of doing this sin. You say, well, Brian, is it really a sin? Turn to Romans chapter 3, verse 8. Romans chapter 3, verse 8. We're going to see about this thing. Some accusations that were actually leveled at Paul. It says here, And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say. In other words, this is stuff people are saying about Paul, and it wasn't true. He's saying this is a slanderous report. It was a lie. But look at the thing that they're saying that Paul is doing. Look at this. Let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. In other words, he's saying, these people are saying about us that we're saying, let us do evil that good may come. And you know what? Those people that are saying that are lost. Their damnation is just. 
And that's something else you got to remember, by the way. Just I want to say this real quickly. There will not be one innocent person in hell. Not one. Anybody that goes to hell, their damnation is just. Mark it down. So when you have people that are messing around and saying, you know, I think we can do evil that good may come. I mean, I'm going to pretend that I'm a filthy, rotten pirate, a thief. I'm going to look pretty with it, though, and, you know, do little cute little songs and stuff like that. I'm going to do evil that good may come. And by the way, you know, as I showed at the beginning there, you have Captain Morgan, rum, you have Pirates of the Caribbean, this Walt Disney mind control movie stuff. You have these two things. What's the stop for a child that's going to one of these Baptist Babel buildings that's a big fan of Patch the Pirate? What's to stop them from wanting to get into that movement? Because, hey, we do Patch the Pirate at church. What's wrong with Captain Morgan Rum? What's wrong with Pirates of the Caribbean there? What's wrong with pirates in general? This thing is not of God. Youth movements are not scriptural. It's just as simple as that. And you get people that mess around with this kind of junk right here, this kind of patch the pirate foolishness, they're never going to amount to anything. And I would say most of these quote-unquote conversions are not even real. I was converted in Sunday school. I went from being a lost sinner to a lost church member. And it wasn't until years and years and years later that I finally realized my true condition and I truly came to the Lord in a repentant, broken state and asked Him to save me. And that's when God saved me. Watch out for this youth movement stuff. It is creating false converts just right and left. And Patch the Pirate is just another one of these systems that's going to damn people to hell. I firmly believe that. And you say, well, but, but Brian, God chose that for him. God, listen to me, God will not choose evil that good may come. He won't do that. He won't say, I'm going to use, I'm going to make a Christian thief. Let's make Christian pornography. Or how about Christian drugs? Christian murder. How does that line up? And the dictionary definition right here at Webster's 1828 definition, a pirate is a thief. How can you make a Christian thief? You can't. Stay away from Patch the Pirate. And if you're going to some kind of a Babel building, you shouldn't be going there in the first place. But if you're going there and they're messing around with this Patch the Pirate stuff, or if you're listening to it on the radio, shut it off. Shut it off. And if you're going to a Bab you know, Babel building someplace and they're doing it, and they won't stop doing it, out. Leave. Don't mess with this stuff. God can't bless it.